Hello friends, welcome to Sunday School. Let's get things started with our Sunday School catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes, but deep inside I've got what it takes. I am a child of God. Well done. As children of God, we desire to know more about God and our relationship with Him. One way we do this is by studying and practicing life apps. A life app is something that God does in us to change the world around us. And today, we'll continue exploring the life app, Responsibility. Whoop whoop! Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what's expected of you. In order to instill this message into our hearts and minds, let's say this definition together. Responsibility, whoop whoop, is showing you can be trusted with what's expected of you. We demonstrate responsibility when we take care of what God has made. Things like recycling, reducing food waste, and protecting ecosystems are just a few ways we take care of what God has made. And today, we'll discover another way we can demonstrate responsibility, as shown to us in Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. But before we read the story, you should know something about people in Jesus' day. Whenever Jesus went into towns or villages, teaching and healing, huge crowds gathered. Well, those crowds were made up of very different groups of people. Poor people, rich people, common fishermen, and educated leaders. To help these people see the truth, Jesus did what he often did when he wanted to help people understand. He told a story. If Jesus told this story today, it might sound something like this. There once was a man who owned a beautiful vineyard. He had harvested a bumper crop of grapes. The man knew he would have to prune them or next year's grapes would be small and sour. So the man went to find one of his sons to help. The first son was busy playing his new video game. The father said, I need you to help me prune in the vineyard. It's getting wild out there. But the first son couldn't tear his eyes away from the screen. He said, come on, dad, not now. I just made it to the bonus round. Can't you ask someone else? Sighing, the father went to find his other son. He found him lounging on the back porch, reading a book and sipping grape juice as the warm wind blew. I need help in the vineyard, the father said. These grapes are out of control. Will you come prune vines with me? The second son responded, sure thing, dad, just give me a minute. I'm on the last page of this chapter. Feeling grateful and happy, the father gathered up his pruning shears and hurried away toward the vineyard. The second son meant to get up and follow him right away, but within minutes, he was wrapped up in his book and forgot about his dad's request. Meanwhile, the first son was still flying through levels on his new video game. As he got ready to restart the level, his mind drifted to the vineyard. He thought, hmm, you know, dad is really good to me. I mean, he was even the one who bought me this new video game. I don't know what I was thinking. I should be out there helping. So the first son put down his controller and picked up some shears and headed outside to help his dad. The father was elated to see his son helping in the vineyard and soon noticed his other son was still sitting on the patio, reading his book and sipping on his grape juice. The father shook his head one son had promised to help and backed out, while the other son had refused and then showed up to help after all. The end. When Jesus finished telling the story, he looked to the crowd and said, tell me, which of the sons did what his father wanted him to do? I think we can all agree that the first son did. At first, the brother said no, but then he changed his mind and did the right thing. 
Well, the religious leaders in the crowd were quick to point out the right answer, too. But what Jesus did next really shocked them. Jesus told the religious leaders that people who had sinned and made terrible mistakes were like the first brother because they recognized God was speaking to them and turned to him, while they, the religious leaders, were like the second brother because even though they wanted to follow God, they didn't trust his son Jesus. So what does this account ultimately show us? What's the main point to all of this? From Jesus' story, we can learn that what you do actually matters more than what you say you will do. It's like our bottom line says, show you can be trusted by what you do. I don't know about you, but it can be pretty easy for me to say one thing and do the other. Like, I can say I'm going to do my homework, but instead, I watch TV. Or I say I'm going to take out the trash, but then I mess around my, on my tablet instead. God wants us to show that we can be trusted not only by what we say, but by what we do. We can show we are responsible through our actions. In order to show you can be trusted by what you do, there are a number of activities for you and your family to try on the Sunday School page, which is located on the Holy Cross website. But before you begin your activities or head off to your next thing, I would love to pray with you. So go ahead and grab your elbows or fold your hands Close your eyes so you're not distracted by what others may or may not be doing around you. And then we're going to get really quiet so we can talk to the one who created us. Let's pray. Dear God, sometimes it can be easy for us to say one thing, but then not follow through with what we say. And this can be true in our relationship with you too. Sometimes we say one thing and do another. Please help us to follow through with what we say and to follow you with our actions. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.